Hello and welcome to Pixel Magic Tutorials. I am your host Geekman and today I'm going to teach you how to create a glowing orb with trails around it. Uh, glowing trails around it. Now a couple of assumptions that I'm making as always. Number one, that you are using Windows. If you're using a Mac then whenever I say hit the control key on it, that means hit the command key on your keyboard. And if I say hit the alt key that means hit the option key on your keyboard. Uh, I'm also assuming that you're using Photoshop CC 2015. If you're using an earlier version some of the effects may not work as expected. With that out of the way let's get started. The first thing that we need to do is create a brand new document. So let's hit control N on our keyboard to bring up our new image dialog box. Let's name this glowing orb because that's what we're making. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to make it a width of 2500 pixels, a height of 2500 pixels, so it's a perfect square. Resolution 150 pixels per inch, our RGB color 8-bit. Uh, the background co color is going to be black, so select it as 0000000. Uh, then Adobe RGB and square pixels. Hit OK and we have our new document to work with. Now what we need to do is create a brand new layer called center. So let's create a new layer on our layers palette and then name that layer center. Once we have that we're going to uh, make sure that our rulers are showing. So go to view rulers, make sure that there's a check mark there and your rulers will show up on the left side and the top. And then starting at the top let's click and drag down to the center of our document where it will snap in place. See if I'm dragging, it snaps right into place. Uh, and then we're going to drag from the left hand side until it snaps into place. And then we have guidelines that make a cross in the very center of our document. Then what we're going to do is select our elliptical marquee. So hit uh, M on your keyboard for the marquee or you can click on the marquee and then select the mar elliptical marquee tool. And we're going to use uh, the following uh, options for our elliptical marquee. We're going to use a feather of 150 pixels. Anti-alias is check. We're going to use a fixed size and the width and height are both 1000 pixels. Once we have all that in, we're going to click anywhere in this upper left hand quadrant to create our ellipse. Once we have created the ellipse, we are going to click in the center of it and drag it until it gets to our uh, guidelines. Once it hits the center of the guideline, it, the guideline will change color and then we can move it to the center of the vertical guideline and it will then change color and that is the exact center of our document. Let go and then we are going to use our gradient tool to make a gradient inside of this elliptical marquee. Uh, the way that we do that is we hit G on our keyboard or we go over here to our gradient and we click on that. And the first thing that we're going to do is change our gradient to a specific gradient. Before we do that, actually, so it's not the first thing, I lied. Before we do that, let's make sure that we're on a uh, circular marquee, uh, circular gradient, not linear. This is linear. We want a circular gradient. The mode is normal, opacity is 100%, dither and transparency are checked, reverse is not checked, unchecked. So once we have our options set, we're then going to click on our gradient and we're going to bring up the gradient editor and we're going to put in this gradient. Now we don't want it to be pure white, we want it to be slightly off-white. I'm going to make a green uh, glowing orb with uh, light trails swirling around it. Uh, feel free to use any colors that you want later on. But remember, since I'm using colors, we can always add a hue saturation layer above our final uh, object and then change its color that way. So let's stick with this color, uh, with these colors that I'm using now for this tutorial. And I'll show you at the end how to change the color should you want it to be a different color. So our first color is going to be at the location of 30%. And it's going to be a very, very light green, which is E6FFEC. And then our next color is going to be at the 60% mark and it's going to be uh, green. So it's going to be 52FF7F. 
and that's at 60%. Then all the way over here at 100% is a darker green, and that color is going to be 008923. Hit OK, hit OK. And then we're going to put the uh, selector or the gradient tool right in the center of our document. We're going to hold down the shift key to constrain our line to a straight line. And then we're going to left click and drag to the end of our ellipse. And we're going to then let go of the mouse key and let go of the shift key. And then we have our gradient. Then we can hit control D to deselect. And then we can hit control H to hide our guidelines because we no longer need them. We now have the center and what we want to do is we want to duplicate the center so hit control J and then we're going to hide the center and then we're going to uh, change the name of center copy here to one. That's right just the number one uh, and then we're going to transform this layer so that it is a squished circle. So it'll be an, uh, an ellipse that's squished. And we're going to do that by doing Control T to bring up our transformation uh, options. And then we're going to go up here to where it says width and height. And we're going to change them. The width we are going to change to 120%. And the height we're going to change to 25%. 25%. Now, if you try to make these changes, but they keep being, uh, they keep mirroring each other. So you put 120 in here and height changes to 120. That's because this uh, chain here is clicked, which will link the two together so that they always remain constrained to the same ratio. So uh, make sure that that is unchecked and then you can change them individually. Once you've done that, hit the check mark up here to accept the transformation and we have our squished uh, circle. Now we've got one here, but we're gonna, to make a lot of trails around our orb, uh, I'm gonna want more than just one layer. I'm going to need, I think, six layers. So let's make six copy. Let's make five copies of layer one to make six full copies of these light trails. So let's hit Control J five times to make five more copies. And then let's name them two through six. Five, six. All right, then we have six copies of the exact same thing and we haven't done anything to them yet, so they all look the same. So now we get to start working on the light trails. So what we're going to do here is we're going to hide every layer except for layer one, and then we're going to start using two filters. Now it's the same two filters with slightly dip different options and in a different order for each of these six layers. So we'll start with number one and I'll start slow and then as I go on I'll get faster and faster because you'll get the idea. Now I'll tell you what options I'm using for this tutorial but feel free to experiment and try different options for your own design. You can't really do anything wrong if you don't like what you see just hit control Z to start over again. So let's start with uh, what I'm going to do and then once you've mastered that then you can do whatever you'd like for your own designs. So on this first layer, I'm going to start with the wave filter. So let's go to filter, distort, wave, and we're going to use these options. Number of generators, we only want it to be one. Uh, our wavelength, we want it to be 600. Oh, actually, no. Let's go all the way up to the top to start with, 998 by 999. All right, uh, our amplitude, we want 500 and a max of 999. Our scale is one and our vertical is 100. Make sure that repeat edge pixels is on and make sure it's a sine wave. Uh, you could try triangle if you want later on. It kind of makes some funky effects, but we're gonna stick with sine wave for now. So let's hit okay. And we've got this look here, but that's not really giving us our light trails. But what will is if we use the next filter, which is distort, uh, filter, distort, and then twirl. Now, let me zoom out because their preview window is so small. Uh, and as you can see, that does twirl it around a center. So we're going to try an angle of only 600. 700 seems like a little much for this first one. And you see how it kind of twirls out like that? Let's hit OK. And there is our first light trail. 
makes for a very nice light trail, I think. So that's our first one. I think that was good. So let's hide layer one, start layer two. So select layer two and then unhide layer two. And we're going to start again with the wave. So let's go to filter, distort, and wave. Now we already used these uh, options. So let's try a couple of different variables. Let's, um, let's change the wavelength to 600 and we'll change the max to 601. That looks good. And there, that's now our new light trail starting point. So let's go back to twirl then. Let's go to filter, distort, and twirl. Uh, zoom out a little bit so that we can see what we're doing. And it makes that nice thing, but let's change this to negative 60. So now it's kind of going backwards or, or in the reverse clockwise direction. The uh, layer number one was clockwise. This one is now reverse clockwise. And let's hit OK. So now we've got this look. So we've got two different looks, but they give you kind of the same feeling, which is nice. Uh, so there's the beginning of our light trail. So let's start now with layer three. All right, so we're going to go to uh, filter, distort, and we'll start with twirl this time. We won't start with wave, we'll start with twirl, because twirl will give us two uh, trails coming out of the center. Uh, so let's start with, uh, let, let's make this positive 600 instead of negative 600. All right, so there we go. That gives us kind of a twirl, but it's a little too regular. It, it's missing something for me. So how about we try putting in the wave? Let's go distort, wave, and let's, uh, let's put this all the way back up to the top. Yeah, let's make it 998, 999, everything else keep the same. Hit OK, and now it's kind of this funky looking thing, which is not what I wanted. But if I add in another twirl, I bet it will be. So let's go to distort, twirl, and now we're going to twirl this funky looking thing to get a very cool looking uh, a light trail out of it. So let's make, this, uh, let's make this 700, not 600. Let's give it more of a twirl. There you go. That's looking pretty cool. That looks very nice. So then when we add them all together, you're beginning to see a lot of light trails around a center point. All right, and then we're basically going to do the same thing for four, five, and six. Now, I'm going to talk my way through it because that's what I'm doing here is I'm showing you exactly what I'm doing. But when you're doing this, if you like what you see in one, two, and three, or if you just like one of them, you can just repeat that one a couple of times and it'll be fine. Uh, for me, I like to have a lot of randomness in my uh, swirling, glowing orb. So I'm going to keep going until I have six of them. Then once I have all six, I'm going to duplicate those and then rotate them slightly to make uh, basically 12 different light trails everywhere. Uh, so let me just show you what I mean. So here we are on number four. So let's, uh, let's start with the wave here, filter, distort, and wave. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go basically start with the same thing that we had before. So we're at 998, 999. We're going to start with all the same stuff here. So we're going to hit OK, right? But instead of doing it like this, what we're going to do is we're going to transform this and flip it upside down. So rotate 100, so control T, and then right click, and then rotate 180 degrees, and then hit the check mark so that it accepts that uh, transformation. And then, now that we have this, then we can twirl it. So we're going to go to filter, distort, twirl, and this time we'll do a negative and we'll change it up 650. Okay, and then we'll hit OK. And that gives us this look. So when you start adding them all up, you're getting a very nice, cool effect of light trails everywhere. So then we're going to go with layer five, and we're going to do uh, filter, distort, wave. Let's do wave again. Why not? Uh, and then we're going to change the wavelength to 600 and 601 again. Let's go with six, whoop, 600, and then 601, 601. Hit OK. And then let's flip it because why not? Rotate 180, hit enter to accept, and then we're gonna go to filter, distort, and twirl. 
and we'll make this, uh, let's keep it at negative 650. That's fine. All righty. And then let's go with six. We're going to do filter, distort, uh, twirl. Let's start with twirl. We did that last time too, twirl. Uh, and let's make this, uh, we're at negative 650. Sure. Why not? Let's make it easy. Um, and then we'll go to filter and we'll go to distort and we'll go to wave and let's make this 750. Why not? We used that number before and we'll make this uh, all the way up at 999. We'll hit OK. That's really funky. So let's go to filter, distort and twirl again. And let's make this oh, 700. Let's go to 700 here. Oops, select. Let's go 700. There we go. That looks really cool. Okay, so then what we're going to do is we're going to unhide all the layers and we're going to take center here and we're going to move it up on top. And we've got our center. Now, you can leave it like this and that's fine. It looks very cool. Um, but I'm going to do a little bit more to make this a little bit more uh, cool. I guess. Uh, let's take our center and let's make it slightly bigger so that we're covering up more of the, uh, the glowy parts and giving it more of a cool glow. So now we've got a bigger glow in the center. And then let's take all of our layers, center all the way down to one. So we'll click on center and then shift and click on one. And then we're going to make a group out of that. So we're going to change that group. And then we're going to change it from pass through the group from pass through. We're going to change it to screen. So here we have this. So now we're going to duplicate the group. Okay. And then we're going to rotate this duplicate control T and rotate until you get a look that you find appealing. I kind of like this. Yeah, that kind of looks cool. Hit enter to accept that transformation. And then you have this sphere, this glowing orb. So now you can select both groups and you can hit control E and you now have your glowing orb. And now as promised, uh, here's how you can change the color of your glowing orb to make it any color that you want in any intensity that you want. So here you have your glowing orb. And we are now going to change it by putting up a new hue saturation adjustment layer above it. And you are going to be able to change the color by hitting this check mark right here into colorize. And then you can change the hue and you can change the saturation to whatever you want. So let's make the saturation roughly 90% to give it a good glow. And we can change it to a nice hot pink or a purple. Ooh, that purple looks nice. So let's go with purple. So there you go. That's how you can create a glowing orb. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you did, please leave me a comment or like this video or subscribe because I'll be making a new video every Tuesday. And once again, this is Geekman signing off for Pixel Magic Tutorials.